there are many people out there that believe our ancestors were much more advanced than we think. Some say this is backed up by modern discoveries that prove they had a good understanding of engineering, further saying that perhaps advanced civilizations flourished in the past, and were far more abundant and capable than that of the current modern age. Originally seen as nothing more than a ridiculous theory, the idea of an advanced prehistoric age has come to the forefront in archaeological discoveries. What some people often struggle to understand however is what could have been the particular cause for these advanced civilizations, and why it is today these ancient technologies have been lost to us. With that being said however, every so often some of these designs come to the surface, and most of the time they leave us with more questions than answers. One of these discoveries happened in 1961 in Romania. An engineer discovered a strange looking manuscript. He started looking through it and discovered that it detailed something he didn't expect. He noticed that in the manuscript it detailed some incredible concepts about rocketry at a time when these concepts did not exist. The person who designed these went by the name of Conrad Haas, and he lived between 1509 and 1576. It's incredible that someone during this time was even able to come up with these ideas. Researchers have said that he was the first person to put into writing the concepts of multi-staging, further saying that his concepts were put to the test and they did in fact work. Incredibly, his work doesn't stop there. He went on to design in detail spacecrafts, delta fins, bell nozzles and even liquid fuel. The Sibiu manuscript consists of around 450 pages, of which include the incredible designs of a three-stage rocket. What's incredible is how someone born during this time was able to come up with these sort of ideas. Researchers have come forward and said there could be many manuscripts out there in the world that we do not know of, each one hiding secrets about our past. One thing that we do know is that this manuscript is real, and it goes into detail about rockets and liquid fuel. It was officially published in the 16th century, however some have even said that it was written using text going back even further than that. It's these types of discoveries that make people say that going back humans were a lot more advanced than we thought. So what do you guys make of this? And how was someone able to design rockets this far back in the past? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Over the years historians have been able to uncover many mysteries from the past. However there are many cities hiding underwater, buried under the sand and forgotten in jungles. There are even civilizations who mysteriously disappeared and no one ever heard from them again. These lost civilizations are one of the biggest mysteries of our past, and it's hard to believe that such a big amount of people can disappear so quickly. Many people believe these were only migrations due to extreme weather changes, but there are theories claiming an entirely different story. Lying deep in the Taklamakan Desert on the southern rim of the Taran Basin, you can find the archaeological site known as Nia. The region of Nia is often known as the Pompeii of the East. No one knows what happened to the residents of Nia, and why they abandoned their city in panic. The residents of the ancient city disappeared leaving their dogs, food, clothes and basically everything behind. They fled for their lives from something unknown to us. A British archaeologist rediscovered the ancient city of Nia back in 1901. The city comes from the fact that it lies near a younger and smaller city by the same name. This city lies near the Nia River. The ancient city is believed to extend 25 kilometers or 50 miles north-south. Thanks to the available historical texts, the ancient ruins lie in a geographical era that was once the ancient kingdom of Junji. The artifacts found at the ruins of ancient Nia suggest the city was a prominent stopping off point of Silk Road. The ancient city had only 480 households. 3,360 individuals and around 500 soldiers at the time. Knowing that Nia lays directly on the southern route of the Silk Road, it's hard to deduce whether all the goods actually passed through Nia. There were no other major cities in the region, so there is a possibility Nia was a provider of the basic needs required by many travellers. Many researchers believe there was a key stopping off point along Silk Road, the remnants on after the area also bear witness to the city's importance of one of the cultural crossroads. There are images of flying dragons in many shapes, the Buddhist paintings and many other artifacts that were retrieved from gravesites at Nia. 
Sadly, we have no idea what happened to the residents of Nia, and why they decided to abandon their city to never return. Many people tried to come up with an idea, but there are no results and no proof, and researchers think the mystery may never be solved. For a long time now, researchers have come forward and said that we know more about what's going on on the surface of the moon than what's happening within our very own oceans. These are considered the most unexplored places on our planet, and each body of water is teeming with incredible mysteries. One stretch of water that's caused some questions to be raised is that of a lake that can be found in the mountains of Oregon. For many years now, people have passed this lake and wanted answers for what they witnessed. This small lake can be found close to a highway, and it's most well known for vanishing once a year. It does this during the dry summer months but then reappears during the wetter seasons. It's been called the Lost Lake and going back several years ago it wasn't actually known as to why it did this. However, after researchers decided to study the phenomenon they discovered the reason behind the disappearing water, and it's due to a lava tube. A lava tube is a natural channel that's formed by flowing lava. Every year this lake goes into one or more of these tubes and vanishes. The researchers behind the study have said that these lava tubes have been here for a long time. The lake itself formed thousands of years ago and it's estimated that it sits on top of a 12,000 year old volcanic rock. Every year we learn new things about the body of waters that scatter our planet. One of these has become known as the hot tub of despair. It appears that research scientists have discovered a strange underwater anomaly that can only be described as an underwater lake so toxic that it's viewed as a large biohazard to life throughout the region. The underwater lake rests 3,300 feet below sea level in the Gulf of Mexico, and seems to be at the center of a vast desert-like region of the ocean uninhabited by life. The lake appears to be a pit of water that is visibly heavier and more condensed than the surrounding water giving it the appearance of a naturally forming lake underneath the ocean. Research scientists have discovered that this lake is filled with extremely salty forms of water, much saltier than the water surrounding it, while being mixed with a rare form of dissolved methane that will instantly damage any sea creature that falls inside. This discovery was made by a research team from San Pedro, and they used underwater research vessels to help assist them with gathering information surrounding underwater biology and geology. If more of these structures can be discovered in the near future, it might help to shed more light into the unexplainable nature of these underwater lakes and their effects on marine biology. Over the years, there have been reports of large human-like giants known as yetis. These creatures are usually encountered in snowy regions, and have been compared to the American Bigfoot. The evidence for such a monster living in the isolated frozen mountains in permafrost has more than piled up over the years. However, so far concrete evidence has been hard to come by. The best thing we have so far is footprints, and an alleged skull. Found in a Buddhist monastery in Nepal is what some claim to be the hand of a yeti. While this hand has had its fair share of criticism, others believe that it could be real. Over the years, locals in the region have said these creatures do exist but they don't seek out humans and are only seen once in a while. They live deep in the region surrounding Nepal, and are often identified by the large footprints they leave behind. Peter Byrne was one of the first people to find out the monks of the monastery had these incredible artifacts. Going back in 1953, a group of Indian mountaineers viewed the Yeti scalp and tried to carry out tears. However, the locals don't like for people to remove the object, and are very picky about who they let touch it. One story goes that the locals did in fact let the artifacts be taken from the monastery, and allowed for tests to be carried out. However, another story says the items were stolen and sold off in a private market. After the results came back, it was identified to be a tub of hominin, having a slight match to Neanderthals. What's interesting about this though is that other tests showed it definitely wasn't human. To this day, the artifacts remain a mystery with scientists saying the test can't be carried out due to the items going missing. Some believe that the creatures being witnessed in the area is in fact that of Yeti, while others suggest that Himalayan wildlife is being misidentified. For example, the Tibetan blue bear and the Himalayan brown bear could explain some of the sightings. Interestingly, Yeti sightings are nothing new. People have been encountering large humanoids in the wilderness for hundreds of years. 
Some have even suggested that Gigantopithecus or some other great ape seems like a more plausible explanation for the Yeti, further saying that these giant apes may not have died out, and that a small population of them may still exist. However, scientists say this is very unlikely. Over the years, many have attempted to study the paranormal. Most of the time, however, they are just left with more questions than answers. Given the fact that no one knows the true nature of how a curse can occur, it has been a tale often fraught with mystery as much as terror. Though the ways an individual can be cursed can vary depending on culture, one thought that has always been the same is the ownership of an object, and what that does to its owner. Often referenced throughout history of cursed objects of whom have brought nothing but horror to its new home, there seems to be a retelling of these same themes to this day in modern tales of cursed objects that still find themselves in the ownership of families filled with misfortune. One of these objects goes by the name of Charlie. This doll was first discovered back in 1968. This is when it was discovered by a couple in an attic of an old Victorian home. The home was located in New York, and when first looking at the doll it makes many people feel uneasy. This odd looking doll was discovered with a load of newspapers and other items. A little side note is that when the doll was picked up it was wrapped up in a yellow piece of paper, and this contained the Lord's Prayer. This newspaper clipping dated back to the 1930s, but it's thought the doll itself is much older than that. The family added the doll to their collection they already had and started to call it Charlie. After a while the family completely forgot about their new addition. However, it wasn't long before the family noticed that Charlie would move from where they put him. This happened on a multiple of occasions, but they also put this down to the children playing pranks. The children however came forward and expressed they didn't touch the doll, with one of the children saying the doll would talk to her during the night, and that she didn't like it. It's important to note the parents never actually saw the doll do anything that could be described as paranormal, but the children say otherwise stating that it would give them nightmares and it even got so bad that they said they wouldn't sleep anywhere near the doll. After this the parents returned the doll to the attic, and strangely there was no more mysterious events. To this day the case remains an unsolved mystery. So what do you guys make of this? And do you think the doll is haunted? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.